Hello, and welcome back to Siberia. We're in Sergei's little... Little shrine of worship. Little... Something. Oh boy. This poor woman Helena. And we have to find her. We have to find some clue in here as to how we can get her to come to good old... Kumkolsgrad? Was that the name? I already kind of forgot. So, let's see what horrors we can find in here. Let's see if we can look at anything. Oh, no, I thought I saw like a hand. Yeah, I guess not. And, oh, yeah, no, that's probably just going out. Yeah, that's just going out. I guess we have to take another step into it. Ooh, okay, just more of the same. Dresses, pictures, very, uh, lewd model over there. Highly detailed. And that's pretty much it. So we got a drawer to look at. And really, that's... That's it? Nothing on the makeup table? Nothing in the mirror? There's just one single piece of something? In the dresser or a drawer? Huh. And it's a book. And I guess it's time to read. Okay, that's that's not too bad. Alright. Let's see what this is saying. Young Helena or Helena. Yeah, that's kind of weird. He said... Did he say Helena? But normally you say Helena, don't you? I don't even know. I'm just going to say Helena. It's probably wrong. Helena Romanski's crystal clear voice moves amateurs and professionals alike. Gathered for the ninth... Oh, oh boy. Voix do festival... I, I don't know. In Brussels, the young Russian soprano was the revelation of the event. She is an exceptionally talented singer, and at the tender age of 20, Helena... Yeah, that actually does sound like more right... Helena Romanski. I'm just gonna say Helena. Helena looks to have a very promising career ahead of her. Helena Romanski's finest numbers are collected here on this golden disc, millions of copies of which are being sold around the world. The Voice by Helena Romanski, and that's like, she's much older there, I guess. Or is she? Is she older? She looked kind of old in the first photo, honestly. Like, if this is her at her 20s? I don't know. Comrade Helena Romanski sings for the people. Her series of recitals with piano performed... Recitals with piano performed in the factories of our great republic. That's a, an odd sentence. After Kiev, our diva arrives at Komkolsgrad, ravishing Helena... What? Ravishing Helena is seen here with a factory director? Comrade Borodine and several admirers. I guess just ravishing as in, like, she looks good, but that's a, an odd adjective to choose. Helena Romanski's success in Europe is assured. The great Helena Romanski, Helena Romanski, can we say her name enough? Our nation's glory appears and triumphs every night on Europe's most famous stages. Following from Milan, Paris, and Vienna, Helena Romanski gave an exceptional recital in which her voice was even more powerful and moving than ever. Helena Romanski at this point is at the peak of her artistic career, and her recital recitals that year are exceptional. Wait, what? Again, that sentence doesn't really make any sense, like, grammatically. It's, at this point is at the peak of her career, and her recitals that year are exceptional. This year are exceptional, or this year were exceptional. I don't even know. The high point and testimony to this greatness is her unforgettable interpretation of Rigoletto, sung with her great friend, the Russian tenor, Frank Malkovich. Let us not forget that the latter has recently decided to pursue his career in the United States. Yesterday evening, adoring crowds filled out the Bolchoy Bolkoy to say their fond farewells to Helena Romanski, their diva making her last ever public appearance. Romanski revolutionized 
lyrical artistry, and her name has already passed into posterity. Through the well of emotion, her fatigue and illness, she merely managed to utter a tearful thank you. And she bows off from the stage. So there we go. Oh, and more things to read. Letters! This time, not known at this address, return to sender. What? What do you mean? Has he, like, intercepted mail to her? In her old place of living? That's creepy, if that's true. I don't know. Yeah, that, that probably is. No, I see. It's... It's his mail. Wait, so... Wait, what? How did he get this if he sent it to Helena? And then, like... I guess it got returned to him? Like, he, he sent it out and then she didn't live there anymore, so it got sent back? Possibly? Dear Helena... Oh, it's uh, Komkolsgrad, June 15th, 1997. So, what was this, like, five years ago? I think we were in 2002, right? Pray forgive me, such familiarity of tone. I have written to you so often, and for so long now, that I feel I have come to know you intimately through my correspondence. Creepy, creepy! I hope, if my previous letters have reached you, that you share this feeling. I am writing- oh god, no. I am writing to you at this address for the- oh no, 112th time. I hope that, one day, you will return there, and you will find one of my letters. This one, maybe. I can only hope. It is just that I have so much to say to you, so much to share. My work progresses well. As I wrote before, the hardest part was to put theory into practice, but I am gradually finding solutions to the problems and have managed to add a whole host of fine adjustments. The grand organ is now nearly complete. I can't wait for you to see it. Madame, I have transformed my factory into a crown, and I hope that you will be its jewel. By the way, I was right in the, like, flashback when you uh, found the, the voice cylinder. We did see the organ, very clearly the organ, so I guess either they just... I'm assuming they were just too lazy to, like, model an actual, like, what the pipes looked like before he made them into an organ. I don't even know. Kind of weird. It is a magnificent stage. One worthy of your talent and beauty. Helena, I feel so close to you. You and you alone are all I think about. The more time that goes by, the more certain I become that one day you will visit me in this factory that is dedicated entirely to you. I have immense hope in my heart, and I am awaiting your acceptance of my invitation. Yours in faith and devotion, Sergei Borodine. Oh, Jesus Christ. This poor fucking woman, Helena. Oh, man. And that's it. No secret compartment. And nothing else. So... I know what to do here, because I remember this puzzle specifically, because it's a pretty clever puzzle. But I will go and just check with a guy one more time, just to see if he says anything new, now that we've, like, looked at the stuff. I mean, he wouldn't, right? Because we didn't get anything new here. But I'm gonna do it anyway, just talk to him one more time, just to confirm. Pretty sure nothing is new. Hi. How's it hanging? Listen, obviously all this has been just one big misunderstanding. So you're going to give me Oscar's hands back, and we're going to get out of your city immediately. Out of the question, I must have these hands. That is all. But they're not yours. Who are you? Okay, that's not new. I'm sorry, I can't make head. That's not new. And I do And you. I. Well. I. And what if I helped you to? Why? And that's the you same. An automaton pianist, didn't you? I pieced it together uh, myself, my dear. Except for the hand. Your passion amazes me. Ah. Uh, clockwork. I think we heard this right. An existing model, you say. Yeah, yeah, we sure, definitely heard dear. that. 
Okay, I didn't recognize the, the, the first you, uh, stuff. I, please. Yeah, so nothing. So, this is what you have to work with, as far as I know, for this puzzle. And it's definitely one of the trickier ones. I have purposefully not drawn attention to uh, the parts of the puzzle that are the keys. I just wanted to, like, give you a chance. Can you figure it out? Do you know what we're supposed to do right now? I'll give you a few more seconds. So, if we go back and check what we just read inside the press cuts. Whoops, don't, don't take them. Look at them. We see here that Helena was a famous singer and released a bunch of songs and she sang at the factory and stuff and blah 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 and then she has a friend a great friend the russian tenor frank malkovich frank malkovich kate the legend do you remember our good old mom actually knows this frank it is the very same frank so you just have to call your mother. I think it's a very clever puzzle if you've been paying attention to her talking about this Frank. Hi, Mom. Kate! What? Have you seen the time? Why are you phoning me in the middle of the night? Oh, she sorry, picked it up very I quickly. about the time zones. Did I wake you? Um, well, of course you woke me up. I, I was sleeping deeply, too. Oh, that doesn't Don't sound sincere. Sleep. I've got an absolutely crazy day tomorrow. I'm sorry, it's just that it's real important and urgent. I haven't got a lot of time. Well, if it really can't wait till tomorrow, Munchkin, come on, tell your mommy what's up. Uh, no way I'm calling Dan for you, if that's what you want. Oh god, she even knows about no, it. Listen, please. I seem to remember you're seeing a Marovich. You just read like the name. The no, 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 no. Malkovich, Munchkin. Frank Malkovich. Yeah, right. So, but he's an opera singer, right? That's right. They say he had the finest voice of his time, my dear. Imagine that. That's just great. So then he must have known a famous singer called Helena Romansky. She's Russian, too. And she Please, says Helena. If... Listen, honey, if it's stars you're after, Frank knows them all. I'll just wake him up and let him tell you himself. You mean he's... Oh, ho, ho. Oh, Kate, listen, you're still there. Frank tells me he did hang out with a Romansky once, but it was platonic. You know those singers. She's a great soprano. Great. Does he know where she went? Does, does she still sing? Where does she live? One second, Munchkin. Do you know? Can't you just put him on the phone? Frank says she was very ill and she withdrew from circulation. Really? Oh, what is... Oh, oh okay. Um, she went to rest in some spa somewhere. He thinks it was called Arrowbad, but it was 15 years ago, and he's not sure. And, well, honey, when Frank wakes up, he always takes a little bit of time to get going, you know. Wink, 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 Thanks nudge, 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 nudge. And Frank, too. You're both fantastic. Love you both. Thanks again. Catch you later. So there we go. That's our next clue. Let's just call a bunch of other stuff to see if anything happens. Don't think it does. The offices of Martin and Law Yeah, it's closed because it's the middle of the night, as she said. Sorry, I'm... Yep. Wait, that... that was new? I'm just gonna listen to that. I think it was a new message. Sorry, I'm resting. And I ain't home to no one right No, now. that is... that is old. She... I guess she re... Oh god, I'm moving my... I'm moving my mouse cursor all the way from this... this window over to my OBS window, which is like the... the big screen for me. Oh man, that's... that's quite confusing. That doesn't count. I didn't click though. I did not click. Yeah. And just for good measure. Dan Foster. So yeah. Pretty pretty neat puzzle. It's it's one that takes advantage of the phone for once and you need to have paid attention 
to the ramblings of your your little bumbling mom and I really like that I think it's very clever so um do I want to just talk to him about it right away or do I want to go and talk to Oscar about it first I don't know I'm gonna save and uh, we'll see about that like I want to talk to the person that I'm not supposed to talk to because maybe if I go to talk to go and talk to Oscar he'll just say like well I can't do anything without my hands but if I talk to this guy I actually don't remember what happens now maybe he'll give oh oh that's what happens now oh it's Dan again probably Hello? did I wake you up yep I can't sleep at all then it's like business 10 a.m. here round and round in my head what business Dan but Kate that argument we had have you forgotten I really need to talk about that again oh you know I, I guess we were both a little high strung that's all but don't sweat it okay yeah sure getting carried away never solves anything does it I must say I felt really dumb when I hung up really yeah I left the door to my office open and I was convinced everybody around heard me uh, I'm so embarrassed Dan please say I'm sorry to your colleagues from me it doesn't matter honey promise me that you will never put me in that state again oh You're god usually so I can't do that Dan I have the impression that this journey is putting more than distance between us well, it's true, I'm living a whole load of new and amazing experiences. Okay, I see. And uh, still no Hans Warlberg? No. I'm getting maybe close, closer. maybe. You know how important you are to me. Hurry home, huh? I'll try. Big hug, Dan. Well, at least that sounds more supportive and, and good and fucking sane and normal. So, there's that. All right, I'm gonna just say one more time again, just to make sure I don't have to redo this. If this is well, yep. Hello. Director. Ah, oh, it is you, Miss Walker. Director, I think I know where Helena Romanski is. My God, you have found Helena. That is fantastic. Okay, see you later. Um, train. You know. I could get there ten times. Oh, you don't ha uh -huh. you uh, back. okay, that's weird. Then I could use my train. Out of the question that I tamper with my pianist now. Please understand. Well, hold on, I'm gonna skip this because I don't wanna even hear it when I haven't talked about this one yet. But I'm assuming in that case I am supposed to talk to this guy first. Okay, I'm just gonna talk to this guy about everything. And then, if I can, I'll go talk to Oscar. And if I can't, if something happens, like a, an unskippable cutscene or something that goes down, then I'll just load, talk to Oscar, and then skip through everything here, just to make sure I do everything. So let's just talk about Aralbad right away. From my research, Helena Romanski is living in Aralbad. Aralbad? Helena Romanski is in Aralbad. You know the town then? You know where it is? Of course. It was a famous spa resort. In its heyday, Arlbad welcomed all the big wigs of the regime. To be granted a stay there was a real honor. Today, the honor has gone, along with all the generals and colonels, all washed away with the sea. How poetic. It sounds like a good place if you need to take it easy or convalesce. I think Madame Romanski would be happier here. Oh God, of course you do. She'll prefer the peace and quiet here. It's not quiet. It's the fucking loud as shit with all the machinery. Of our little town. Plus, it's like fucking toxic in the air. Like heavy metals, they're not good. You're wearing a fucking mask, probably to protect yourself from them. Oh man, this guy is so delusional. Okay, so. Uh, do I want to talk about train or let's just go through the list like what from top to bottom this lady is going to come back with me you're a lawyer are you not no doubt you will be able to plead my cause brilliantly to her nope okay how can I get to Arrowbad there is one way that you can here in the city there are no suitable vehicles left. But that drunk old fool living up there, 
He'll have something. What oh, drunken old fool? Oh, right. You mean you're not alone? What's up there? You mean you haven't noticed the space compound on the plateau? There's still some pathetic old soldier guarding it. But he's more interested these days in reaching for another bottle than reaching for the stars. And you think this gentleman could have a vehicle for me? I haven't the slightest idea. If you catch him on a good day, then maybe. But good days for him are far and few between. I wish you luck. How do I get up to the space compound then? There is a monorail that leads up to Aha. the cosmodrome. When you are inside, I will activate the automatic pilot. Cool. I had completely forgotten about this, like, section leading up or coming up now. I did not remember at all how you get to Erlbad. I remember Erlbad, but I did not remember this. That's very interesting. And yeah, this, it might take a bit longer than, than I thought. Why don't you come with me? After all, you're the person in the best position to convince Helena Romanski. Unfortunately, since my accident, I seldom leave my office if I can avoid it. And it is not wise for a director to leave his city now, is it? Excuses! I remember you saying that you didn't know Hans Varlberg. It's strange because there's a photo in your museum with a man accompanied by Helena Romanski and yourself. And that man looks just like Hans Varlberg. Oh! And so... That's I didn't even notice that. I, him? I think you have forgotten that only several years ago, this city was swarming with people. Do you think I actually knew every employee by their first name? No, of course not. Uh, but the man is holding hands with Helena, so I just imagined that maybe... Holding just hands?! Imagined? Okay, yes, no. You were imagining things, my dear. You have a mission in hand, Miss Walker. Pray, concentrate on it. All right, all right. You know, I could get there ten times quicker if you gave me my automaton's hands back. Then I could use my train. Out of the question that I tamper with my pianist now. Please understand. There are still one or two finer adjustments that I must make before Helena arrives. All right, I guess that's a fairly decent excuse. Because, yeah, I was thinking the same. Just, like, give us the hands back, we'll go to Erlbad, come back with Helena, and then you, you can plug the hands back in. Though then again... If we were a less honest person, we would just say, give us the hands and we'll come back, and then we'd say, fuck him, and just leave forever. So I guess maybe he's he's a bit suspicious of that, and that's why he doesn't want to give the hands up. But I guess just saying that he needs to tweak them further before uh, she comes back is a decent excuse. Let's just talk about everything one more time. I remember your... Why don't you... How can I get what and you I, how do it, what makes you think? Yeah, you're, all right. Okay, I'm going. Wish me luck. I am counting on you, Miss Walker. Goodbye, creepy stalker dude. So, here's the monorail, but we'll go and talk to Oscar before we go on the monorail. So, I think I'm gonna just leave it off here. Might be quite short, because I always fuck up stuff when I'm, like, reading the letters and the the books and stuff. Luckily, I can splice everything together neatly so no one would ever know. And I just spoiled my, my secret. I actually read horribly and mispronounce a lot of stuff and have to reread sentences over and over. So I don't know how long I've actually been recording, like, in, in the end. But, yeah, I'm gonna leave it here. I'll go back to Oscar. I'll just, like run back there and then start up next episode, but we'll have to run back here anyway after talking to Oscar, and we'll just see what he says. Probably nothing super interesting, but maybe, maybe. And then we'll take the monorail. So, I hope you enjoyed this episode, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!